Hi everyone, thank you for checking out my channel. Before we get started on today's video, whenever this video is coming out, I want to first take a moment of silence just to take a breath for the people in Ukraine and around that conflict going on right now in which I can feel there's immense amounts of fear and suffering um, and as spreading out throughout the world. Can we please take just a moment of silence to send some loving and compassionate energy out there as well. So today I wanted to talk about one of my favorite topics, the idea of free will and if it's true that we have free will or not. Because as I have grown and as my consciousness has evolved and uh, as I've studied into the texts of many mystical and spiritual traditions, one of the first things that became apparently clear to me was that there was something going on here in the universe that seemed to have a movement and intelligence behind it, that seemed to operate according to some kind of law that had that there was an interconnection between things in the universe that couldn't be explained solely through the thought model of free will that most people are used to thinking like and most people would tell you that they have. So bear with me as I try and take you through the narrations of this. And I think it's really important because for me this understanding is one of the core concepts of of my spirituality and it transformed my life because you see if you run into anybody mostly on the street right most people are going to tell you that they have free will that's god's gift to us is free will i have free will um it's your choice I, i'm doing and they think as opposed to that if you did not have free will that would mean some kind of tyranny such as like being oppressed in a dictatorship that would be seen is the opposite of free will. So I'm here to try and think, get you to think a little bit differently. So if you, we're all intelligent people, right? If you look into any of the laws of the universe, like the study of mathematical formulas, or you look into the study of chemistry, or physics, or quantum physics, or you study space and uh, the movement of the stars and the planets, you see that all of these systems, right, they're all governed by law. There's all like a movement of law going on between anything in physics that moves. Everything in the world can be described through these mathematic equations. There's an alignment through like the stars and the galaxies, right? So everything is moving according to some kind of law, right? So it's weird to think that maybe a being, maybe a human being would not move according to any kind of law, even though it's a part of nature, even though it's thought processes and it's cells and it's whole constitution are a part of nature, right? And then there's the possibility that there's other laws, spiritual laws, integrated through various planes of reality, which also affect the outcoming of actions. So there's a quote in the Bhagavad Gita the gem of the Indian holy spiritual literature. And it says, all action takes place by the interweaving of the forces of nature. But man, in his selfish delusion, thinks himself the actor. So that means, due to the delusion of the ego, the being thinks itself the one creating the act, the, the, the choice, the one making the choice, the one doing the acting. But there's the possibility that this choice is an illusion. And see, you can almost notice that if what you're going to do like five seconds from now or five minutes from now <clears throat> or what thoughts that are going to arise in your mind in one hour, where you're going to be at this time tomorrow, you actually don't know, right? You don't know what thoughts are going to arise next. So do you believe that you're picking the thoughts that come into your consciousness? And you would say, no, maybe I'm not picking them. Maybe they're arising due to a whole set of past experiences that have like, that have came 
right? And then you say, well, how did I have these tendencies as a childhood? And the, the mystic literature would say, well, your soul brought those qualities into the universe from wherever it was before. Theoretically, if you were able to stop and see all the processes going through somebody's mind, you could see what they were going to do next. You would say, okay, next Jerry's going to walk down the street and, and he's going to call his wife and ask her what's for dinner. And so everything's happening governing to, through this governing of law. And so this idea of oneself as the separate actor, as the separate controller, that, that's actually, it's an illusion of the ego, right? So like, not, instead of acting from an infinite soul and infinite consciousness, the ego, the, out, the most outward manifest of the projection, it projects that it is the one making these choices. It's the one doing these things. And that's who you think you are. You say, I choose to do that. That's my own free will. But did you ever look like one step behind it and think, who, what is the chooser? Who is... I that chooses that. Did you choose your preference of ice cream? Did you choose your favorite sport to play? When somebody asks you a question, do you want to go see this movie or that? What's the mechanism behind the process that your choice comes out of, right? And do you think, and me being in like, in a recovery world based on my addiction recovery, you run into all the time so many beautiful connections, right? Where people are like, oh my gosh, like it's so beautiful. This was the perfect time. Like this happened and this happened and I met this person at this place I never went and they saved my life. Or like, what are the odds? Like what people call coincidences, right? So first you gotta understand, give up the idea of coincidences. You gotta understand there's no mistakes happening in the game, right? There's a perfection underlying it all. So anytime you think, oh, my energy attracted me to this person, or I brought this person the book at the perfect time, or I thought of them when they were going to send me the text, you start to see that like there's an intermingling of energy in the universe, right? And so if I'm prompted right now to go to the gas station, and I run into somebody at the gas station, and it's this boom connection and we have some talk and it changes something and we both go home and say wow everything happens for a reason so if you're intelligent you look back and you say okay so if god brought us here and this happened for a reason what was i thinking that whole time i thought i was choosing to go to this gas station but who was the 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 doer who was the choice maker in that situation right and um I'll share a story that Ram Dass, my teacher, shared. There was a time when he was traveling through India um, with a bunch of other devotees of his guru, Maharaji, and many of them had never met Maharaji. And he was gone. Nobody knew where he was because this was India in the 70s. And, you know, if somebody wasn't there, then they weren't there. So they were going to go back to a hotel. They had been at like a 40-day retreat, I think, of meditation and they were going to a hotel and one of the guys on the bus was like, why don't we stop at these holy grounds? Like they just had a huge ceremony here a week ago and like I was there and we should go. And Ram Dass, he just wanted to get to the hotel and it was tired and he was like, well, the ceremony's over. All it's gonna be is empty fields and why are we gonna go? And he debated it forever and the other guy went and told different people on the bus that he didn't wanna go. Then finally Ram Dass decided, all right, tell the bus driver to take the turn. We'll go there. They go there. Maharaji, his guru, they go by a certain temple to park. He's standing there with another devotee. They get out of the car. Maharaji invites them to dinner at a house with a huge meal. And the people at the house said that he had woke them up at like 5 in the morning that morning and said, 25 people are going to be here later, or some number along those lines. We got to cook a huge meal. And it accounted for every one of them, including the bus driver. So Ram Dass realized, he was like, I, I thought I was thinking this. I thought I decided to make this move to go to the, the, the fairgrounds, the grounds where we got taken to dinner. He's like, but clearly I wasn't the one in, in control of that choice making process. And so if you get into much devotional and mystical spiritual literature, there's lots of talk of 
the surrender of the separate self into the whole. And when people talk about living in a state of flow in the universe, living in a state of energetic flow. And so these kinds of ideas make you realize that like, <clears throat> wow, it's not exactly how I seem. It's not exactly how it seems to be going and I'm not exactly how I seem to be, right? And so moving from this, I would like to shift a little bit into how the laws of karma come into play with this. So karma means action. And so every time you do action powered with intention, even if it's thought intention, you don't physically manifest, that creates new karma. And that means the working out of that karma has to later take place, whether in this life or another life. That's why it said like you can't escape your actions. That's where all those stories come from in like the Bible and the text of like the judgment seat when you die. Not because there's you could manifest as you seeing a physical being judging you, but it's all those qualities come out because they're not as veiled and like you basically make your own destiny, right? So the karma propels you onward and works you out. It's like when you run into a relationship in your life and you're with somebody for years and then you break up, like there was something that put that karma together for a reason. There's an unfolding of things. And not only is it only on the physical plane, it's interrelated through planes, like through spiritual planes of existence, this unfolding. So what I started realizing was that I'm more apt to understand like surrendering. And I still have the, the idea of making choices, but I have to understand that I'm not in ultimate control of them. And I'm not really the chooser, right? It's more of a process that's unfolding. Now there is a part of you that's free, but that's what in some traditions of yoga is called the Purusha. That's the inner, inner self, the inner soul of all life. And that is what's doing the moving of everything in nature. But it's not the part that you think it is on the outside, right? So this for me has led to vast freedom. And it didn't make me like, oh, now I can't do anything because nothing's my free will. I act more decisively now and I have more concentration and discipline. And it's not that I abdicate responsibility, but I know deep down that there's a perfection of law unfolding that's working these things out in the universe. And so I think it's something important to consider and think about, right? And it doesn't abdicate the responsibility for us to do work and to take responsibility for our actions. But at the same time, we understand that there's much more at work here and that's much more wondrous than we might perceive it to be, right? So I urge you to keep an eye out for those type of, those type of workings in your life. And for me, it came down to like realizing these things, right? For example, in the Hindu mystical literature, there's lots of beings instead of just seeing the trajectory of one lifetime they'll tell you the trajectory of they were this person in a previous world or lifetime and they came down into the world to do this and these beings came in during this period of time for a certain reason so it's almost like they knew what was going to unfold just like christ came into the world knowing what was going to unfold just like if you study the rules of astrology you'll see, if you were into looking at your astrological chart, I'm, a, I'm an Aries. So there's certain predetermining characteristics of an Aries or of a Scorpio or of a Taurus. And so where does that come from, right? That's dependent on the karma that determines when you're born and the alignment of the stars and electromagnetic fields at your birth. And that gives you certain predetermining characteristics of your behavior and your life path. So how can you completely call it free will if you believe in the in the zodiacs being accurate with these determining qualities, right? So it's a very interesting concept. And in Buddhism and in, and in other yogic philosophy and Hindu philosophy as well, but the Buddha said, one who thinks himself the doer can never be free from the rounds of birth and death, from the wheel of suffering, of illusion. So 
one who thinks that he's he's the actor that he's making all the choices um in the mystical literature and, and alan watts the the great philosopher used to often speak about the universe is like a flow unto itself like it's all one thing waving it's just waving in all these different modalities of consciousness so i guess what i would say with this topic is that it really giving up the idea of doerness right and then it looks it makes you look differently at what you do and it makes you look differently at what other people do too and then sometimes they do think they're the doer and you know it's just like they're just thinking that you know it's just their their ego trying to it's an ego trying to be in control and it wants to think like yeah i'm making this choice like i'm doing this right and uh but the only part of you that's free is the part that's outside of nature so like most of us 99 percent of the people you meet at least 90 percent are completely trapped in nature so they're governed by the laws of nature and so Unless being free from nature, one is co confounded. One is acting according to law, right? So I guess it's just an interesting um, consideration in the modality that you can look at things unfold in your life differently. And then you, through understanding this, if, if it seeks, seeks into the, your soul, you operate differently in the world. I, through understanding this, operate um I would say more lightly and with more presence and the way I sense and understand things is more peaceful and intuitive and more according to harmony. So thank you guys very much for watching this. Again, I don't know when this video will be posted, but I, I just want to send my most heartfelt compassion out to the people of, of Ukraine and around the world that are suffering right now, struggling immense fear and pain going on now and um if we can't do anything we could send loving energy in that direction so i bow with everyone else and i will be back soon thank you